resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. Yes, we're back on Games Masters Nautical Holiday Camp. I've just been up to the helipad and I'm positively awash with the latest games players to come gushing out of my chopper. So let's begin our sprightful soiree with a little trip to the Games Master. Greetings and welcome to the Games Week. The first of this week's Jolly Japes is a prehistoric romp amidst the dinosaurs and pterodactyls of Joe and Mac, Caveman Ninja. You will need to negotiate the tricky first level in less than 90 seconds. A stern test of Neanderthal mouse. Best of luck. And tonight's Neanderthal challenger is Bromley's very own Wolf Wood. <laughs> Now, Wolf, you're actually here for a special reason tonight, aren't you? That's right. I've come to rescue my girlfriend, Lisa, who failed last week and is in the pit. That's right. Now, what we've said, because we're very nice people here, if you can complete this challenge, Wolf, Lisa will go home with you tonight. How have you been doing in practice? Pretty good. Pretty good. So you're confident we'll have a happy outcome? Yeah, I think so. Well, we wish you all the best, Wolf. We're with you. If you'd like to take your place in the games playing chair, we'll tread tenaciously up to start. And joining me for this romantic challenge is a man who's no stranger to a conquest or two, Frank O'Connor from Super Action. Welcome, Frank. Thanks very much. Now, Frank, there's a lot riding on this tonight. How can you help with Wolf? Well, he's going to have to do it quickly. He's got one and a half minutes to get to the end and defeat the dinosaur. And his main squeeze is in the pit, so he's going to have to get her back, isn't he? <laughs> OK, so, Wolf, are you ready? Then your one and a half minutes begins now. OK, off goes Wolf here. Wolf is playing the old caveman, Joe and Mac. Lovely little spin there. He's not wasting any time at all here, Frank, yeah, is he? Yeah, it's easy to waste time killing dinosaurs and baddies, but it's actually much faster if you just avoid them and jump over them. OK, he's got his hearts in the top left-hand corner of the screen. When they get to zero, Wolf's romantic dreams are ended. Now, he's breaking up on this side. What's he got in here? Well, I think he's armed now with a sort of chicken drumstick stroke club combination. <laughs> and uh, if, he uses it, if he uses it well, which he's going to have to when he reaches the dinosaur, he should do it in plenty of time. OK, he's had uh, just over, he's had 35, 36 seconds. He's doing very well indeed. Oh, bit of a bash on the knock in there. Oh, now that could do. That replenishes the energy a little bit. He's got four hearts left. He's got to keep going though. He's only got 42 seconds left. And he's down to three hearts. He can still do it if he really rushes. And here he is at the end of the level. And the dinosaur should come on now. OK, this is going to be very, very tense indeed. He's got 31 seconds left in which to defeat this dinosaur. Is it going to appear? Oh, yes, here it is. Now, how does he, how does he get this Tyrannosaurus? He can hit it on the eye or on the nostril. And uh, the thing will flash to signify that it's been hard. But he's okay. standing right in his mouth. He's actually and that's standing not right in his mouth. tactic? No, not really, no. OK. He's only got 16 seconds left here. It's going to be very tight. We can see the dinosaur's energy, those three grey lines there. There, just underneath the uh, wolf's heart here. He's only got 13 seconds left here. It's going to be very, very he close. Can do it. He's going to hurry, he's going to hurry. He's only got eight seconds left. The time's going down. The time's going down. Come on, wolf. He's got four seconds left. Four, three, two, one. The and dinosaur's gone. He's, done, done, it. he's yeah. done it. He's done it just in the nick of time. Well done, Wolf. Excellent display there. It did get very tight at the end. Was there ever any time when you thought you were going to have to go shopping for a new girlfriend? Over the water was difficult. But you did it at the end, and as a result, not only have you won the golden joystick, you have won a prize worth more than a million golden joysticks. You have rescued the fair Lisa. <laughs> Well 
Well, while we slip a discreet veil and let our young couple explore each other once more, we're going to take a quiet look at this week's reviews. This week we step into the chest-beating moccasins of heroes everywhere and delve into arcade adventures. First stop, get back to your own dimension in time for El Dorado in another world. My a great game. The whole setup, the atmosphere with the music, the graphics are superb. You really get a feel for this game. You, you can't go wrong with it. Once you know what you're doing, you start off at point A, you work your way through to point B, and there's, there's not a lot you can cock up in between. Graphically, it's brilliant. Sonically, it's brilliant. But it's far too easy. A day's play just ain't enough at this price. Next up, wear outrageously baggy pants and wield a long weapon in Prince of Persia. A game for anyone who's got delusions of being Sinbad. It's a great clingy, jumpy, fighty game. Once you've solved problems, got your password and gone on through to the next level, the game does become very short in its life. This is probably better aimed at, at, at younger players. Um, older players will probably find it far too easy because the puzzles are just nowhere near complicated enough. Finally, the much-heralded sequel to Another World hits you where it hurts in a rather technicolor manner in Flashback. From the same mold as Another World, but definitely um, a lot more interest here. Zapping, jumping, shooting, leaping, flying, and generally rebounding off lots of hard surfaces in the hope of getting back to dear old Milton Keynes. It's got some of the best animation and graphics I've seen for a long time on the Amiga. One of the, the best games to come out, out lately. I really loved it. Now for this week's feature. It's all very well gathering round Grandpa's organ for a sing-song this Christmas, but if, like Uncle Ted, you want to bash out some Bach for yourself, video games can help you along with the aid of the Miracle Piano Tutor. Over to modern-day Liberace, Richard Bond phone to tinkle some ivories. Best thing about the Miracle is you don't actually need a piano, because it actually comes with a keyboard. Okay. The beauty of the Miracle is it actually teaches you with video games, okay? So when it gets really boring, the mundane part of learning music, the notes, the harmony, etc., it'll actually teach you with the games. Okay, for instance, the shooting gallery here actually teaches you how to hit the correct notes at the right time. Okay, as the ducks come along on the screen, I've got to hit the correct note to shoot the duck. If I make a mistake, it shows me where on the screen I'm hitting the incorrect note until I actually find it. There's also another game called Ripcord. A rip chord actually teaches you how to find the right chords at the right time. So I've got to play the notes at the top there at the right time. Hit them correctly, the shoots come out, I hit the bell. If I make a mistake, the shoots don't come out and they hit the ground. Okay, so another fun way of learning how to play chords. Okay, it's not all fun in games though. The Miracle's actually got a serious side to it, which is the recording studio, where you can actually record your own songs, okay, and sequence them together using 128 different instruments. You can also pull in any MIDI file. For instance, here's Chariots of Fire. And then what we can do, we can add effects to it. Or, or distort it even if you wanted to. What all this tinkering about means is, with only a few hours game playing a week, you can belt out rock music like this after only a year. Take it away, Ricky. If you fancy making sweet music with Richard, you can win a Miracle Piano Tutor at Games Master Live on the 4th, 5th and 6th of December at the Birmingham NEC. To book, call the box office on 021780-4133. And finally, how could we possibly let the week go by without mentioning Sonic 2, released earlier this week? Not only were we the first people to show you the game two months ago, we've actually tracked the person down we think completed it in the fastest time. Here's Paul Reed from Leicester. Bought the game at 5 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, took it home, put it in, completed it on my first attempt in 2 hours 4 minutes, collecting all 7 Chaos Emeralds, then wrapped it up for my mate's Christmas present, and then got ready and went down the pub. Here are a sample of those others who phoned us up to say they'd completed the game on the day they bought it. It just goes to show to be this good takes, uh, 2 hours 4 minutes actually. Another feisty feature this week. 
Well, I've just been down to the cabins to check that our celebrity has been kept in the manner to which he's accustomed. So let's waste no further time and find out what challenge he'll be facing. Nice to see you again. For the night's second challenge, I thought we might retire to the billiard room for some Green Bay's action on Archer McLean's pool. Each contestant will have one minute, 30 seconds, to amass the highest possible score. Please don't forget to chalk your Q-tips. Rack them up. To take on this challenge, we've got one of the best players of this game we could find in Adam Whisker, and he'll be taking on former world and reigning UK snooker champion, John Parrott. Welcome, Adam. All right, John. Right, now, Adam. You are one of the best players of this in the country. You've got one and a half minutes. What kind of a break can we see from you? Well, in practice, it's been in the mid-twenties, but under such tense conditions, I don't know if I can do as well. OK, well, conditions are certainly tense. You're playing against one of the masters of the Green Bays. John, how, do, how does this compare to the real thing? It's very, very good, actually. It looks very, very lifelike. Mm -hmm. um, the cue action's probably a little bit better than mine, <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping I'll do quite well, but I think I'm up against it today. OK, then. Right, Adam, if you'd like to take your place in the game-playing chair. John, if you'd like to hang on behind. And we'll get ready to start. The Games Master Pool Challenge is based on Archer McLean's pool. You may remember him as a challenger in the first series. He's helping me commentate tonight. Welcome, Archer. Thanks very much. Now, any tips you can give our players tonight? Well, just be very quick around the table, really. They've only got 90 seconds, so it's not a lot. OK, then. As Archer said, 90 seconds to score as many points as they can. Adam, are you ready? Then off you go. OK, he's so going straight for the six. six. And off he goes. Oh, first lovely ball in. first ball. Brilliant. Nice one. Good start and one minute, 11 seconds left. No, no, he's got to be really quick with these shots because some of the long ones can take 20 seconds. That's only four or five balls. Yep. Now, what's he going for? Eight, five. Safe shot. OK, he's lining up the five here. That should be quite, quite a straightforward shot into the and bottom right goes. corner. And is he going to follow it? That's a bit on that. Oh, a, li a little yeah. bit of left. A little bit of left on that. Oh, no, is he going towards the pocket? Mm. No, it's just... Oh! oh very, very close. Hovered about in the pocket there, but kept out. So he's got 57 seconds left. Six into the middle. Now, if he uses a bit of spin on this, he can get down for the nine. That's right. Is he going to try that? Is he put a wee bit, oh, no, no. Put a wee oh, bit of spin? Oh, excellent. yes. Nice position as well there. Absolutely straight on. So Marvel. Adam has a score of 17 with 40 seconds left. Now he's trying to five here. I can zoom back a now, bit. what's he going to come on to? Is he going to screw back I for the he six? Might, he might come back off the top cushion for the eight there. All oh, right, I see. Let's see what he does. Okay, he's got to be quick. Got to spin. Yep. Lovely. Okay. Right oh, off the cushion. Excellent. A little bit of an unfriendly kiss. He's down on the bolt. No, he's come off the bolt cushion. Twenty-five so he's seconds all right. left. Okay, he's got twenty-one seconds left. He scored twenty-two points. He's going very well, Archer. He's got enough time to yeah, score another one here. Shot. Long come point on here on the seven. He's going to have to hurry. He's got 12 seconds left, 11 seconds. Excellent. Yes, he's right. caught it. Excellent. Eight seconds. Now, come on, Adam. OK, six seconds. He's going to have to really hurry. Will he be able to get in another one? He's quickly going through. He's turning the angle. Yes. Two seconds. Two. One second. Out ah, of time. Well so, at the end of Adam's minute and a half, he has scored 29 points. If you'd like to see if John Parrott can master that incredible score, join us after the break. Welcome back to the hushed atmosphere of the Games Master Pool Hall, where young Adam Whisker scored 29 points on Archer McLean's Games Master Pool Challenge. John Parrott stepped up to the table. He's about to have his one and a half minutes to see if he can beat the score. John, are you ready? I'm ready. Then off you go. OK, he's going for the eight, Straight and his eight. time eight is about off. to start now. Lovely. Oh, lovely Straight stop off. ball there. Nice on the nine in the middle. Eight points, lovely shot there. And John in the nine. The two's lying there inviting, That's but it's it. the points that count. The numbers on the balls correspond to the scores he gets if he sinks them. He's taking quite power. a bit of time to set up this half power, a little bit of chalk. And I should follow this down the table. And uh, oh yes, slots that one in there. A little bit of left on that. Let's see where he's where he's ended up. He's got right. the three ball there, the two ball. Oh, What's a little bit of deliberation do? needed here. One minute. He's wasting a wee bit of time. He's got 56 seconds left. He's scored 17. He's got 29 to beat. 
Oh, I think it's going to whack him really hard. No, he's, he's going to go for He's six. got to go for that six, I think. The eight and the nine are uh, covering each other. And here he comes, oh, he lines up the six. Oh! Yes. Nice, the eight the nine the nice shot there. He's got he's 40 up. seconds left, 23 people. seconds left, 23 points. He's got to beat 29. The seven would do it. He's going to have 30. Oh, yep, yeah, that's it. He, as I just said, he's got the eight ball into that's the it. middle. 29 screw, seconds left. Back for the seven. Knock it off the cushion. This to win the game. Come on, John. Come John on. Parrott, he's got 21 seconds left. He's going to make it quick. Lines it up, hits it. Oh, no! It's off! Oh, Ooh, he rebounds in. Rebound. He's got 13 seconds left. If he can be quick, he can maybe get this. He's really got a hurry. He's got nine seconds left. Just, he's got to line this up it, so fast here. <laughs> and Archer's he's just got to head home. Four, three, just two, hit. one. Oh, oh, no. John Parrott gets 23 Crazy points. Three. It's not enough, so tonight's winner is Adam Wiskar. Well done, Adam. Congratulations, Sean. Now, now, Adam, that was a very, very tense finish in there. What was going through your mind at the end there? Well, I thought I built quite a stable score up, but um, I think there's an element of luck involved. Oh, he's very, very sporting to you, John. John, the black wouldn't go in. I know that. I know you've got a wee bit of a thing about final black. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, it was tough. One in the centre pocket. I'd been disappointed to have missed it with my own cue, but there you go. <laughs> well, Adam, as the winner tonight, you have won the Games Master Golden Joystick! <laughs> Whisker and tonight's special guest, John Parrish! <laughs> and while we recover from that nail-biting climax, it's time for tips of a different kind in the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. Welcome to the consultation zone. How can I help you? On Super Mario World, I can't find a green switch palace. Can you tell me where it is, please? Oh, yes. Um, I'm rather fond of this one. Travel through the underground world of Donut Plains 4, and beyond the green exit pipe, you'll find four blocks going up in a diagonal. If you're unable to fly, collect a Cooper shell, hurl it at the fourth block, and a vine will take root. Climb this to find the green switch palace. Okay, thanks for your help. I hope it gives you much pleasure. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. What's your query? I've heard there's a secret room in Mickey Mouse's Castle of Illusion on World 1-4. Where should I be looking for this? Ah, yes. Head toward the fifth tree of the level and you will come across a tempting hole in the ground. Dive boldly in and head left toward an apparent dead end. Simply walk through the wall and you'll find yourself in a room full of bounty. Thanks, that's great. That's all for now. I look forward to our next rendezvous. Chromedome seems in fine fertile this evening. Before he hangs up his helmet for the night, let's go back to him for the final challenge. Back for yet more punishment, eh? Your appetite will be well and truly curbed with my last offering, Fatal Fury. More gratuitous violence, a la Street Fighter 2, I'm afraid. Best of three fights wins. You've never seen. Get stuck in. And for this gratuitous grapple, we have a father-son combo. So please welcome Matthew and Ian Sleet. <laughs> Welcome, Matthew. Welcome, Ian. Now, Matthew, do you often play your dad at home? At the Not games? very often. Not very often. So you expect to give him a bit of a thrashing tonight? Yep. Okay. All right, young Matthew's very confident there, Ian. Are you going to show him a thing or two? Well, I've had some uh, special lessons, and I think he's going to go home with his tail between his legs. Okay. Well, good luck to the both of you. Matthew, if you'd like to sit in the left chair, Ian in the right-hand chair, we'll get ready to start. 
And keeping me out of harm's way tonight is GameZone's Vivian Nodge. Hello again, Vivian. Hello again, Dominic. Okay, now this is quite a tough game. Any general fighting tips for our two competitors? Just to keep moving, ducking and diving. Generally, just try as many different types of moves as possible, really. Okay, then. Matthew and Ian, are you ready? Yes. Then off you go. Okay, young Matthew's on the left-hand side. He's playing Joe Higashi in the gold shorts. And his father is in the white on the right, and Andy Bogart. Now we've got two energy bars at the top right-hand corner. They're going to go down, Vivian, aren't they? They're going to go down. Whenever they're hit, their power goes down. You can see the player on the left seems to be losing, but oh, no. Oh, no, but he got a, Matthew got a nice big hit. That one's back, splashing. Yeah? It means one more hit, and he's down. Oh, yes, and that's him down. So Matthew wins the first bout. So we're just about to go for the second bout here. Matthew is one bout up. Okay, let's wait and see. Off the little roundhouse kick there from Dad. Didn't quite make it. Matthew got a lovely elbow in the stomach. Oh no, that's two hits. He's not getting close to him, is he, Vivian? He's not. Oh, it's oh nice one. He's on the ground. Oh, and that's that's bringing it more into shape there. And you can see they're both level on the energy bars at the top. They are. It's very close. Oh yes, Dad got a nice one in there. Oh no, oh, but he's painful. fighting back. He's getting very close. Oh, this oh, is very close so to both the out of energy. And Dean pulls it back level. A remarkable bout there. Ian just pulled one back at the end there. He was very low on energy himself. But now it's one bout all and we're going into the final fight. So this is very, very close indeed here. And off we go for the start of the double. Oh, lovely somersault punch there from Ian. But Matthew retaliated very well indeed. Okay, I think that they've got to do a bit more jumping here, I think, Oh, no, he's down. This flashing red, he's only got a couple more hits to go. Oh no, he's got another one, he's got one more hit, he's out of it. He's got to keep out of harm's way here. Oh, and he's down! He's down, Ian's down, so Matthew is tonight's winner! <laughs> well done, Matthew. All right, good as you you. OK, thank you. Thank you. Now, Matthew, you got off to a good start, but your dad pulled it back in the second bout. Were you frightened at all going into the third? Nah, I knew I could beat him. OK. All right, now, Ian, brilliant comeback, but what was Absolutely. the deciding factor in the end? I'm carrying an old injury at the moment, and it started to tell in the third game. Ian, I can sympathise. Thank you. OK, well, Matthew, because you're the winner of the fight, you win television's best prize, the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> Applause for our two brilliant competitors, Matthew and Ian Sleet. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's it for another show, but never mind. Auntie Marisha's been slaving away in the canteen all day, and she has produced a sumptuous king prawn and oyster and black bean sauce. We're certainly going to enjoy that one tonight, and we'll see you next week.